Welcome back guys to Fire Emblem Path of Radiance where we're getting Ike into a massive battle where he's going to probably take on many many opponents this turn with tons being able to chase down to him. We also have a few high res members ready to try and tank spells though to be honest we'd expect spells to go and hit Ike over anyone else. So we've currently got another squad ready to go up there as fast as possible and help as much as they can. With that said though... I think I might move at least Miss just a little bit closer so she can get in and heal Ike at the end of this turn as well. As the rest are getting ready to do battle, it's time to see what else we can do. Maybe, in fact, move Jill a little bit closer so she can back up as need be on top of that. Maybe even Alincia would not be a bad idea. As we look to end the turn and see what happens with the attacks that are going to be coming in. Let's see what happens to Ike, and let's hope he gets lots of lovely procs. But yes, the spells are coming in from afar. Ike only takes 6 damage from that. Of course, he can't regain any HP from that. And it seems you're running away to get healed. So to be honest, the boss is probably not going to move, of course, because he's not on a rise square. But what we need is certain enemies out there ready to be attacked. I don't know why you didn't choose to longbow me in the end. But everyone's going at range. That's always fun of them, isn't it? Alright then. Short Axe barely does any damage. We are still nicely poised to do more attack, but okay. In comes another group of reinforcements. So, that was an interesting attack round. Not really as much it happened as we kind of expected to happen. So now it's a case of not getting killed by Mr. Blizzard while not being completely stupidly reckless and getting too many people on me to break me down. So maybe I should take out Mr. Longbow Guy first or Mr. Short Axe. Well, we have ourselves other options, of course. Like Jill here. The problem is anyone we bring closer now will get into range with this guy. He's got two more charges of Blizzard left. And to be honest, Ike's probably best off to deal with these. So then, what we should do is probably set up for this one. So, like, for example, I could send Mistwell in to, like, do some damage up there. Oscar needs to get going as well and get nearer to the battle. That's what we decided on last time, after all. And then other guys need to go up on top of that. So let's take care of... Mr. Longbowman, maybe? I think he's got longer range than Mr. Short at. No, he doesn't, actually. We could leave Mr. Longbowman alive, then, and take care of Mr. Short Axe first. That puts Ike in a little bit closer range, all in all, to being able to, well, get to a certain spellcaster and break him properly. Longsword will do some critical damage, so let's use that. It's basically Ike's show from here, because we know he's the... Hardiest member we have, but we want him to proc Aether and just restore his own HP. Either way, another KO gained. We got rid of him. Now we got to worry about Mr. Short Spear. Either he's going to get healed again or not. We could, of course, now get someone like Mist or Jill to come in and out. But her res isn't exactly the highest, whereas. Miss Rez is a lot better off for it. I don't want to get her into a position where she can be taking too much physical damage, though, which, with all these guys coming down, is highly likely. Let's just draw all these troops onto Ike, because I think he can defeat them all, don't you? All right, apart from that, Jill can get one square there and then back off a little bit, which does mean she will get attacked. We do have the option of just topping up Ike as well. Just a little bit more. Who shall get that, though? Do you want to do it, or shall I use the, uh... Yeah, you, you could do the Physic on I No, you can't. You can't. You don't have the range. Well, in the meantime, you could use the Seraph Robe. So what I'll do is I'll Physic over here. And that'll be fine for another level up for Mist. Brother and sister duo doing well for themselves. So extra mag speed, luck and defense. Five stat level ups, never bad. And I'll move just behind Soren here, because we know he can't get that far. 
because this is the overall range for Mr. Longbow, man. Now, the other option is, of course, to attack with Jill and back out again. Let's see, how far can the horses travel? Hmm. If I attack there, I've probably got two more moves to move out of that. It's just this guy over here. His overall encompassing range and the fact that he's quite happy to roam around at the moment. It means that to be honest, I should move Jill out of range of the Longbowman. I should definitely move you out of range of the Longbowman, Alicia. And maybe put Titania on the edge of the range to be able to move in. Oscar's there as well to help out. Nothing really happened on this front. So, to be honest, I say pull this guy now. And of course, no one's better than that. Than Marcia. So get in there, Marcia. We'll pull that guy out of his position. We'll go even go Steel Lance as well, just in case we can do anything extra there. And maybe we'll get Mr. Chance. Over this side. Or more to the point, maybe we'll wait here and then get Mr. Chant to get the bonus experience. We're in a position where we could really strike forward after all. Right, so Bogonone Tome. No one's going to really hit me here, so that's not so bad. I'll just move Rolf up to follow. As well as Marcia Mia. Marcia Mia? Yes, her. And Volk just behind. So that'll create a second attack squad there. And then we've got the guys that patrol the middle. They're kind of ready to do stuff. But they're also not really all that ready to do stuff, are they? They're still a strong attack squad on their own. Especially with Neff there. And Boy to just be there for strength purposes. So, end another turn, let the attacks come onto Ike and see how he does. So you're moving away, you're going to keep out of range, are you? Dodge. He's only got one more charge. So we don't have to worry about him really as a for a threat in the end, but everyone's got ranged weapons, which is not fun. I will just dodge them though, they don't have the speed to face Ike. Of course, the Longbowman tries to go for Ike at very short range. I was expecting straight defense, but this is why we sent Ike up there. There are ways things could have gone wrong otherwise, but... No, Ike's sorted and he's dealing with everyone on that side. Which is perfectly fine for us. Because I think Marcia can do a silent sneak up the other side and take down Mr. Meteor Bolganone. Yes, come and fight Ike. This is the best idea. Now supposedly I don't have an advantage on you here. But I did proc Aether. So you can go bye bye. Farewell to you. Bring on the next opponent. Oh, you're a bow one, are you? Everyone's a ranged guy. Not wanting to engage with Ike in full battle. Be taken down nice and easily. Oh, you're going to actually stand there? Ah, oh, so, okay, this guy can come and attack me from the side. Is there someone nearby with something that stops my longsword being amazing? Oh, well. Proc A for easy win. It doesn't even matter about weapon triangles or anything like that. Oh, I thought my longsword was good against units mounted on horseback. It's really not doing that exactly, so that's a bit weird. Mr. Shine over here doesn't want to cast anything, it seems. No sleep, no physic being cast. I say going up to end him is a good idea, but now we've got an interesting proposition where we can just charge with certain people. Titania can probably... Oh, what? No, we've still got them slightly out of range, of course, because of Longbow guy. So we got Short Spear over here. we got Longbow there. Who's best to take out who? Okay, the Longsword's great against you. And can Oscar take down the other one nicely? Well, the Oscar Lance, he definitely can. So let's just switch to a Steel Lance and just 
break through then head up to the healer. They pretty much are the duo now, aren't they? Alright, so I'm going to be an interesting proposition for you in a second. And in the meantime, do I want to go for that or do I want to go further in? That's what I'm wondering here. Let's get nearer but not quite so near. So a double longsword to take out this guy. In reality, I only need two units at this point in time, or maybe three, maybe four. It's nice to have a healer as well. I think Oscar, Ike, and Marcia could pretty much do everything. Not the Jill can't either. Right, some extra strength, strength, speed, luck, and res. I'll take four level up. I was a bit worried once it skipped the bottom side, but extra strength's never a bad thing. Right, of course, we have the option to blizzard ourselves. But I don't think it will take the guy down in one f swoop. I mean, we can double these, but that's not really going to provide me much. What we could do here is, if Blizzard Guy is nowhere near enough... Okay, Blizzard Guy can move into range with Jill. I was going to say, move Jill up to, like, kind of hand axe back versus the guy. Well, that's not going to happen, it seems, but we can start pushing, pushing, pushing at this point. I don't think anyone can reach her. There's no one really that can get around very far anymore. So this can go there, and to be honest, Alincia, do you want to heal? Okay, you've got a men's staff for 1 HP. And then we still got... What's going on down this way to take care of? So, Reese can just move up and take an easy KO there, but Reese is level 8. Vulcan Mir at lower level. Mr. Bolganone, Meteor Tome. I don't know what exactly his range is at this point. So let's just, yeah, let's move you up, sir. Use the really light to take him down in one shot. And then we'll move Marcia into what I'd call an easily in-out dippable range. Where she can go and take care of the range spellcaster and then easily get back again. So somewhere about... Oh, to be honest, may as well go a hell of a long way in. And with the Pegasus horn, I guess, just in case anything happens. The, the real problem here is if this boss moves with his Ruin Sword there. But I think overall, I mean, his hit's high. And he does magic damage, which I think, to be honest, I've got a high enough res for. That she'd survive it because of her overall speed and her defense isn't bad. She's got no weaknesses because of full guard. Yeah, I'd say we're fine to go really in there. Let's see what happens after the fact. So everyone's just ready to go. May as well move Rolf up as well a bit. Let's see what happens apart from that. Because to be honest, it's just another end turn. I'll let Ike and Oscar go to work. The last ranged spell comes in. Of course you're going to target Oscar. He's a lot easier to target, I say. Yep, everyone after Oscar. He's got the higher defense. I wouldn't even bother. We've got loads of healers by and with physics staff, so they're just going to come up here and go, ha ha! Not really a problem. The Lagoo's Lance comes in. All twisted and deadly. As Oscar says, oh, well, I'll just get my own HP back a little bit. Not so much damage, but free healing. And then I get put to sleep, except it doesn't work. It's too bad, though, at that range that I can't retaliate. And then Oscar gets attacked again. Well, doesn't really seem like Oscar was bothered, does it? So he's got two ways of looking at this now. He can go straight for the boss. 
or just help continue to take down these guys. So, to be honest, first of all, before anything... Oh, do you know what, Ike? Yeah, that's your choice. We're going to take care of the two spellcasters. So, first of all, goes... Let's go Spear and take you down. So, you've got Elwyn versus us at the moment, have you? The only reason I'm going Spear, of course, Mr. Oscar Critical, is just in case Mr. Throwing Spear wants to throw yet another spear. I hope there's no more reinforcements at this point in time, because these two are very much up there, but to be honest, these two can survive pretty much anything on their own. And then Ike's going to come in and whop away the guy who might make me go to sleep, basically. I guess one Silver Sword Strike will do it, won't it? I could use one Silver Sword Strike, or I could use an Armor Slayer because there's so much armored units around and just go with two. It's a waste of a charge, but... It's better preparation for all those around us. Another enemy drops dead. And so we've pretty much cleared the board, especially once Marcia takes out the spellcaster here. So we shall we do that first? Mr. Arrive isn't very much likely to move. In fact, this guy's got meteor equipped, so he's pretty much vulnerable to anything. Still Lance will just double. Farewell. That takes care of our problems, doesn't it? And as we stuck back just one spot, we shouldn't be able to get range from here. So now it's about seeing the boss's range. Now I think Rolf can go up here. We might want to keep Rees a little bit backward, a little bit back. Apart from that, do we have anything to steal from him? We could steal a Vulnerary! I don't think that's really that important. And then we have choices for possibly an Axing or two for some opponents. So let's move Jill up here. Still Axe will be fine, won't it? And then Titania's a higher level. No, he's not. We can move her nearby as well. Or the Titanator! Or just a killer axe or something. We're trying to get her lances up, so we'll just put her closer. That's pretty much solved for this bit. No one can really get much further. I say Mist as the next highest defense, don't you? And I could have healed with Physic to certain party members, but we're okay. Now we've pretty much got the range of everyone on the map, so we could move up with some other strong troopers as well, but to be honest, the rear guard isn't really required that much anymore. The only thing I can really get out of things apart from that is maybe just to put someone on weight, chat them for 10 experience on racing. Just basically, what we learned this episode is that we can stick Ike as far upwards as we want. If Oscar's by his side, even better. And they could just take everyone out. And he's even gained more strength this episode, so that's brilliant. Throw your spear all you like. I'll just dodge, especially with Oscar so close by, I think it is. We buff each other, don't you know? Alright, so going for Oscar, of course. I'm assuming we won't be able to take this guy down, just like last time. Not a critical, how dare you! I still thought he would have gone for Jill, really, but... Oh, oh well! We could start to work on the boss, but now we've got even more adversaries. But we are in better positional terms to kind of move up and fight them as well. I mean, Boy could archer at one of them. The Tanya could even get in on this one. So I think we're not actually in dire straits. We could probably take them all out this round if we play our cards right, or somewhere around those lines. Yeah, go on then, Titanator. Killer Lance would be more preferred for me, but just take this one down, Titania. The reinforcements keep coming, and with my pink axe of glory. Another one bites the dust. So 
So I wonder how Boyd could do in terms of just... Right, what are these guys got? Steel Lance, Silver Lance, Silver Sword. We'd probably take down the Silver ones first. What we can do here is Iron Bow. Okay, we won't be able to get a winning strike in there, which is disappointing. Unless I shove him further upwards and get him to axe someone, maybe. Void Smasher might be better, maybe? I do not know. We'll find out next time on Fire Emblem Path of Radiance as we look to take care of all these troops before finishing off the boss. Of course, we've got Marcy and Rolf that we can use to get in range as well. Brilliant. I'll see you next time for more. Bye-bye.